Hi, hello, and welcome. I am definitely not Rupert, and you're watching me pug my way to 2.8k rating on a Retribution Paladin in Dragonflight Season 2. Real quick, just go check out the poll. It's linked in the description. It's at the top of the description. The poll is basically you getting to choose what I play next in the next series. There are five choices, but actually more than five choices, because there's a few classes that I would play multiple specs of. So yeah, check it out. Let me know what you want me to play. In today's episode, we're going to try and push more rating. That's basically all we have left to do. I might also try to make some gold, but yeah, let's get into it. By the way, if you keep coming back to these videos, even though you're not subscribed, please do consider changing that. I'd appreciate that a lot. There's a bunch of recurring viewers that are not subscribed, and I'd love it if that changed. Also, if you enjoy the videos, please do consider dropping a like, leaving a comment, letting me know what you like about the videos. I really love those. A lot of them just make my day, to be honest. Also, I reply to every single comment, so if you have a question, suggestion, request, whatever, shoot a comment, and I'll uh, definitely see it. Raider IO has been blocked from an action only available on the, to the Blizzard UI. Uh, yeah, I've been seeing a lot more of that. I think it's something they put up in a patch in maybe i just need to update my add-ons i don't know but yes i was told that there is a brush worth 2k gold by andrew it's just lying there on the ground basically it said like a true rogue there is supposed to be a tauren getting painted or modeling for a painting for a drac there somewhere over here near some kind of tree okay, if i'm looking at the map correctly it should be somewhere over here hello yes any drac there painting enjoyers no just ducks. Ah, there we go. Oh, it's not a Tauren model. Okay, so I guess it's random who's modeling. That's cool. But yeah, here's the elegant canvas brush. I'm just gonna yoink that. Sorry about that. My friend told me it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll bring it back for sure. Oh, it's a family heirloom. Yeah, no worries. It'll be back. Before you know it, it'll be right there. Fucking sucker. <laughs> that was 2.1k gold right there. I, I actually like that. That's really nice. Thank you very much, Andrew, because I am broke and I need to craft more stuff. Well, need to is probably an overstatement i would like to craft a chest and boots just and boots and chest and boots and chest and boots but i would yeah i would like to craft a chest and boots probably chest first because it gives more stats overall per item level but i'm gonna need to make quite a bit more gold before that can happen let me check if there's actually world quests for gold nope still the same old quests that i chose to ignore the first time there is this one and this one okay there's some new quests in zarelek it looks like i'll go do those quests really quick i'm not even gonna record it and then we're gonna go look for a mythic plus dungeon for us to do what key do i have of course i have a fucking vortex pinnacle the one i've already done i have i've successfully forgotten that i got annoyed about that but yeah i'm gonna go do the gold quests and then uh find a group and i'll just skip to the point where i'm actually in a dungeon i'm on my way to do a Neltharian's lair 20 if we find a tank i know that red on is gonna like this because he likes Neltharian's lairs i will break your curse i will time the 20 just so long as we find a tank there's a tank there's a hell of a tank yeah why are they not being invited instantly <laughs> we should invite them but yeah sorry if i'm saying your name wrong but but here's the Neltharian's Lair for you. I'm going to time it. Well, I'm going to try to time it. I'm going to jump at the four second mark right about now. Not at the four second Steve. You got to jump at the four second mark. A four second George will do as well, but the mark is the best one. We all surf in it looks like. No, a couple of people got left behind. Looks like the party lead got left behind. I think he doesn't know that he can still jump down and activate the key. The monk tank actually linked a route, which I always enjoy. Holding my DPS. Not sure how much we want to pull. Okay, are we doing more? Are we stopping? Okay, this is where we're going to stop. That's this was a uh, pull number one on his route that he linked, so that makes sense. I'm glad I waited, because now I can do big damage. Okay, we had AoE stun from the monk. I also used blinding light. The idea is to interrupt the lurkers when they start doing their frontal after they teleport or burrow behind someone. I'm gonna give blessing a sacrifice to the tank, may as well. I don't like I have anything else to really use it on. I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to be a hell of a blast of a run. Like, it's going to be super easy mode. We'll see when we get to the breakers and the whatnots. We do have triple melee, so it's a bit of a rough one. Luckily, we have a balanced druid and a priest so that they can stay at, at, at range. So only one circle from the breakers will drop on top of us. But we'll, we'll see how it all works out. Didn't use bloodlust yet. I'm assuming we're going to use it on this boss. God, I fucking love the infinite. Oh, shit. Boss is up. Never mind. But yeah, I was going to gush about my infinite hand. Yeah, here's the bloodlust. It's like we discussed. Dropping all my cooldowns. I'm going to knock to the side. I'm going to use a shield of vengeance. Probably should have used it before I had to move. Or had uh, before I got knocked up. But... Or knocked back. Whatever. You get what I mean. I'm just hard switching to adds. There's no reason to risk them uh, going through. I'm gonna stand on top of the tank. That way, both the tank and I get knocked back into the same direction. I don't believe this boss parries you, so you can just stand right in front of him. I'm gonna save my beacon for one of the adds if necessary. Moving out of the razor shards. No reason to get hit by those. Tank knows it as well. Shatter's coming through soon, and this should be the last skitter, so we're gonna drop a beacon on it. Make sure it doesn't persist through the uh, shatter, because when shatter goes through, it makes all the little bugs ex explode, and when they explode, 
explode, that's quite a bit of damage. So on Tyrannical, you really, really, really have to focus the Skitterers to make sure that they don't go through during the big bada boom. There we go. There's another Shatter. I have Shield of Vengeance. Just going to use Shield of Vengeance. Very nice. That should be the boss dead. There we go. Somehow I'm doing 111k DPS single target. What the? No, it's not single target, Vlad. You're hitting two things. Yeah, 30% of my damage there was basically done to adds. Never mind. It's not as impressive as I thought it was. And I'm, I'm excited to see what the next thing I play is. If you skip the intro, basically the poll is up. You can check the top of the description. That's where the link to the poll is. There's five classes there. Well, actually, there's, yeah, there, there's five classes, but there's more than five things for you to choose, basically, because there's two that I will just have an extra poll for because I can choose between the specs for the classes that are there. So yeah, check those out. And here comes the real fun part where we have to stun the drummer when he starts drumming. Stun him. There we go. Monk also did an AoE stun, so it's fine. Looking for the breaker when he does his bullshit. I'm targeting the Nasher because I want to make sure I interrupt that stone gaze. Avalanche is coming up soon. I'm going to move away. There we go. My melee friends don't have to worry about it, and I can keep DPSing because I'm a paladin. Make sure I stand behind the hunter. His little slam thing that he does is actually a frontal breaker thing coming through soon again. We're going to move away. There we go. Very nice. The group seems to be handling the breakers quite well. The ranged, at least, is doing quite well. For melee, I don't know. I haven't forced them yet to take a beating. I'm going to drop a stun on this guy just to reduce the damage that we have coming in. Avalanche coming through. Okay. Looking at health bars, making sure I interrupt something if necessary. Or not interrupt something. Sorry. I, mean, I meant like... Uh, lay on hands. Could I beacon this guy? No, he's too low to beacon. It's not justifiable. Avalanche coming through. We're gonna beacon this guy. It'll cleave this guy down. And it'll be fine. We're gonna res the druid once we're done. Although druid can run back pretty quickly. There we go. He's running back. I don't want to battle res for that. That would be very, very stupid because we were safe. You only really want to battle res if you cannot do something safely. That's when you want to use a battle res. Okay, we're doing the double... The Breaker, Breaker Pelter Ball Shard Hulk. We're going to stun this and we're going to go to town. Okay, we have kicks going off. I just stood in that like a dum-dum. I'm going to force target the Pelter. I don't care about the jump back. Should have probably saved my thing. I forgot that this is the route that the tank wanted to go. He's doing this so that I can later on. I'm going to give him Blessing of Sacrifice. But we're going to do this so that we can later on skip the um, guys in the water. Makes sense. And also we can have a pull that isn't just the big Hulk and one Shaper, which I can appreciate. It's actually more time efficient. So I might incorporate this into my own runs in the future if I play a tank in Season 2. <laughs> I don't think I'll be playing a tank anymore. I think the last series in Season 2 is going to be whatever I play next. So yeah, I think I interrupted myself. But yeah, go go vote for what I play next. Okay, pulling these four. Okay, I'm going to kick this Shaper as well so the tank can position him where he wants to. We're going to drop all our cooldowns here. Avalanche coming in. we got to move. Looking at the tank to make sure I do any off healing necessary. Blinding Light here real quick to interrupt a cast or two. This fight's going to last a while, so we're stunned something. Piercing Shard is coming through. I'm not in front of it. I don't care. Ooh, our Shaman got wiped out. We're going to kick that cast. No reason to let it go through. I'm being focused by this thing, so I just got to move away until it kicks the bucket. Blessing of Sacrifice is still on cooldown. Oof. I used my Shield of Vengeance a bit late there if it feels like i'm a bit slower than usual that's because i am because i just woke up a little bit ago and immediately went to record it looks like we managed to kill the hulk before he got his bullshit off and by bullshit i meant his frontal cone because that frontal cone is fucking ridiculous okay i'm gonna drop a stun on the pelter kill the scorch thing real quick try to cleave the pelter for as long as possible kick that no reason to let it go through the only thing we can interrupt we're just cleaving the pelter we want to cleave the pelter okay targeting the pelter directly because if uh, he jumps away from people he's gonna jump into the wall which is not a far jump so yeah i don't have cooldowns for this i'm not a big fan of that we should have done this well then again maybe some other people had cooldowns or didn't have cooldowns but yeah we're gonna drop a beacon on this guy we're going to battle res the shaman drop a stun on this guy we can finish him off safely i'm gonna drop a blessing of sacrifice on the shaman switching to this i just think it's safer to switch to this the pelter the breaker should be moved over here but i think the tank was waiting for an avalanche to go through i can stun the pelter again or this pelter this time because I have the double cooldown reduction thing that I'm running for the stun, which is great. I keep getting healed, hit by the breaker avalanches, which is a bit of a dumb, dumb thing of me to do, but oh well. All right, we have all our cooldowns available. We're going to drop everything on his head. Overcapping on holy power, but I don't mind. Not a huge deal. And turn on friendly health bars. Make sure I'm not standing on top of the other melee. Tank, of course, knows how to stack all these up. That's beautiful. I'm going to switch to those to clear them out. No reason to take all that AoE damage. I can cleave the boss. Back of the mountain coming through. I did kind of jeopardize the monks, or sorry, not the monks, but the enhancement shaman's positioning. Okay, it's on me. You just need to move a little bit and you're safe. Okay, we're stacking these up again. I'm going to switch to them right away because the boss is going to go under soon. So, may as well try to finish these off so I can focus on where he's going. Okay, let's try and 
follow it this one okay i think it's this one i'm not gonna use any cooldowns on it doesn't have that much health so that can nuke the shit out of the boss as soon as he comes out of the ground i'm also going to move away a little bit the reason being sometimes as soon as he comes out he does his uh strike of the mountain okay i think we're in a good spot here gonna beacon him as well never mind yeah i did manage to get the beacon cast off i had to move there i was scared for my life he should be dead before he goes down under so that's good i'm not gonna switch to the bellowing idols because he's almost dead we have movement speed from the doodoo and we're gonna give movement speed to the priest as soon as the doodoo movement speed runs out which is now very nice mind soothe yeah this group is great i'm, I'm loving this group 64 percent means we can skip these because the the route that the tank gave us is really really good i'm gonna definitely start doing this route because the mobs that are before this boss basically i used to have a very slow pull where i only did the hulk and one shaper there's no reason to do that pull like that drop all our cooldowns here kick this no reason to let it go through stun the metamorpho metamorphosis that was already done i'm going to oh, never mind that got stunned as well we're good all the grubs have been stunned grub stu stunnage is at maximum capacity we can try and get a kick in so this moves over here so we can cleave all of it very nice shaman also dropping kicks in poor healer getting chased around by some spiteful now i'm getting chased around by some spiteful this is getting rooted that's because of spiteful the healer's trying to, or not the healer, but the druid, the balanced druid, trying to deal with those. I'm going to use my wake of ashes. By the time we're on the boss, we should be fine. It should be used. We're going to stun this bad boy. Ooh, I'm getting my ass kicked. I walked into the poison on the ground, and then I got bopped by one of the vengeful spirits as well. Or spiteful shades, not vengeful spirits. What am I even saying? Where did that come from? Yeah, you see the shaman's health bar there just dip like crazy? That's because he got hit by the frontal that the grub master does. It's a bit ridiculous that it's, like, even the, the ability tooltip says that it's not a frontal it says that it's a slam around the guy but it's it's not around the guy it's in front of the guy so it's yeah i don't know it's weird i consider it a frontal and i try to look out for it i'm dropping all my cooldowns on the boss i don't know if we want a bloodlust here bloodlust question mark i'm gonna save my beacon for one of the ads there we go we got bloodlust coming through we're gonna dispel poison from ourselves let the healer short everyone else out both of these got put in the poison so i don't really have to put much damage into them i'm gonna use my beacon on the boss now maybe we can get two beacons in during this fight i don't think we'll be fighting this for three minutes though it's fortified so we should be fine toxic crutch coming through gonna dispel myself i would ideally dispel someone who's a bit squishier than i am but we have a shaman who probably has poison uh dispel totem so should be fine was slow on the dispel there but it doesn't matter gonna give the tank some movement speed so he can get away from the bike tongue if necessary probably helps him just a little bit holding until i have all my cooldowns available we have all our cooldowns available gonna build up holy power and then gonna drop everything dispel myself in the middle of this which is unfortunate i prefer not to waste any globals while i'm in my cooldowns but oh well okay both of these are going through poisons because this group is just a bunch of fucking beasts i gotta love it you gotta love it it's amazing and now we can stay on boss there's nothing else we need to do just need to beat the shit out of him i don't think i dispelled myself there toxic wretch coming through priest is in half health so we're going to give him a dispel there we go and i'll use my shield of vengeance here just to stay healthy very nice so far so good now let's see i believe this tank is gonna fucking nail it on the last boss because he's been doing everything right so far and i love seeing that we're going for the dominator plus breaker plus demolisher pull we're gonna target the demolisher once he hits 70 percent health he tries to turn into the big mean dude and if we can stun that he stops he never casts it again there we go there's the char skin we're gonna switch to the breaker actually now we should switch to the dominator drop all my cooldowns my long wings are still up i was focusing on the demolisher to make sure i interrupt him if you interrupt him once he turns into a mob that just auto attacks that's all he does looking at health bars make sure i top everyone off anyone off with lay on hands if necessary do we get a soothe we do not get a soothe we get a kick his ass until he dies a little bit careful about that monk frontal there's the frontal that took out our shaman unfortunately because he wasn't paying attention to it but that's okay we have a couple of people down oh no 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 is this a reset this looks like a reset like i could have used something there yeah reset yeah it looks like a reset is the healer dead offline it looks like it no he's not offline okay we reset all's well that ends well we're gonna use a steed and then we'll give freedom to the priest to keep us moving along how did we pull that stuff behind did i accidentally pull it i don't think i pulled it i'm not i don't think i did maybe i did i just apologized in a, either way because i feel bad if it was me giving freedom to the priest again make sure that he's moving quickly him and i are the two slowest people it looks like i'm not gonna use my steed here because we almost done so because i was gonna jump down so there's no reason to use the steed here i will use movement speed though and we're gonna give the priest one more final freedom keep him moving I don't, I don't think judgment can split this range i think somebody walked closer to that than they should have that, that as well could have been me I, anyway yeah let's focus up rockbound trapper is who we're going to focus here to remove one source of damage as quickly as possible because they both do randomly targeted single target dps we're going to drop a stun right here 
Probably should have interrupted first and then done a stun, but people are dropping all their cooldowns on it, it looks like, because they all had time to refresh their cooldowns. The mobs are just exploding. Oh, that's nice. I like this ring of peace. It keeps me safe from these guys. Should I have used a beacon? I can still use a beacon here. I'm going to use a beacon here. Fuck it. The dominators on Fortified are definitely worth a beacon. Focusing the trapper. I think that's the tank putting the skull on him. I appreciate that. Sometimes people just tunnel the dominator because they're like, oh, big enemy. Very scary. We get the interrupt there. Dropping a stun. Full duration. Beautiful. Yeah, that shaman keeps getting hit by frontals. He just doesn't give a fuck. He just stood in the frontal again. Uh, do I use my cooldowns here? I don't think I use my cooldowns here. I think I use them on the boss. I can use a wake of ashes. I'll use a wake of ashes. I can use a shield of vengeance here as well. Sure, frontal. Yeah, this guy just keeps dying to frontals. <laughs> he stood in front of breakers. He stood in front of the dominator. Like, I don't, I don't quite get it. Somebody's already casting a res, most likely, so I'm just gonna give... Actually, they're not. I should be DPSing this down. I don't have a repair bot, buddy. Okay, the monk does. Good, good, good. This monk is hard carrying us. It's like the reverse of the Brackenhide situation. Instead of us hard carrying the monk, this time the monk is hard carrying us. It's obviously not the same monk, but still. And right, we're good to go, it looks like. the We are all ready. People are ready to move as well. We're going to stack in front of his left arm. That's where the ad spawns. So you want to spawn a crystal right there. It went really far away. Tank might opt to move him. Magma Sculpture's coming in over here. Burning Hatred is not on me. I am hard switching to the ad. Ad is about to get stunned. Very good. Range should have been closer to the boss, but it's not tyrannical, so I really don't give a shit. This is going to be pretty easy. So far, so good. Crystal Spike coming in. Decently nearby. I'm okay with that. Wake of Ashes again. Another crystal coming through. We're going to move just a little bit. Never mind, it's on the range further away. Tank might opt to shove him into the corner there, or he's just going and let the magma wave come in over here. The reason why he might shove him in the corner over here is so that the melee DPS can keep meleeing him. We have a set of cooldowns available. I'm going to hold that for the add. There's the crystal spike. It's very nearby. I like that a lot. Molten crash into crystal structure or magma sculpture, whatever. Let me drop all our cooldowns here. It's on me. We're just going to move just a little bit to make it get stunned. There we go. We're going to drop beacon on this bad boy as well. Off he goes and he's gone. That's it. That's all she wrote. We're now very safe. We have one crystal back there. We're going to have another crystal come in before the next magma wave as well. I'm just going to use a defensive here so I reduce the damage coming in from this AoE thingy. Okay, plenty of room with the crystal spikes. That's good. Magma wave coming through. I'm going to go play it safe. I could bubble here, but I like saving my bubble here in case we lose crystals and I have aggro of the structure. That way I can bubble. He can auto attack me and nothing happens because the damage that the structure does to the group is actually from um, it walking. I'm gonna drop everything here on the boss because we can melt the boss before we need to kill the structure, so there's no reason to hold cooldowns for the structure. But very nice. Neltharian's Lair has been timed. Take that, Radon. I am not cursed. I have broken the curse. It's even plus two. Dude. That's amazing. What a run. Alrighty. Very, very nice. 111k DPS overall. I'm pretty happy with that. There's not many big pulls that you can do in this, uh, this run. When I commentate, my DPS definitely suffers for it, but I do well enough to do these 20s, 21s, and 22 so I don't think it's an issue for the series at least if I wanted to push higher I don't think I could commentate that much I have some alchemy specialization points to spend I haven't done any alchemy I literally I just have it so that I can have the file last longer so I can save some gold on that so far we've gone through 58 files 112 pieces of deviously deviled eggs or servings i guess not pieces and 30 howling runes actually even though they last for two hours that's uh yeah that's a thing i think it's because i reapply it more often than i need to Let's take a look at the dps shaman blasting for sure but here you can see where he died on the trash wasn't having as much dps i think he also died before the second boss a few times yeah this is where he died for sure i think i battle resed him somewhere over here cool 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 fun run tivere i assume that's how you would say that tiver tivere the monk that was in this run if you're watching this video, dude, you you were fucking amazing. That was that was amazing. I enjoyed every moment playing with you. It was really good. Now let us update our rating. We've breached 2.7k, 2704, and 60 runs in. Best run is still plus 21 VP. Our item level hasn't changed. Very, very nice. It is now time to go for another dungeon. Let's see which one we get into now. I've been putting in 20 to 22, or sorry, not plus 22, 20 to 22, so that I can reach, uh, so that I can search for all the ones that I want to do. A 22 Vortex Pinnacle, that would be an increase in rating, but I think I want to focus on getting the dungeons done that I haven't done yet. But yeah, I'll continue the video once I'm in a dungeon and getting ready to do it. Getting ready to run a Uldaman Legacy of Tier 20. I was quite happy to get invited, honestly. So dungeon's pretty rough on Fortified. I guess having a 20 cleared on Tyrannical helps. I'm gonna kick 
take this chain lightning now that I'm coming in. I wanted to grab the thing. I have bloodlust going. I can appreciate that. Blinding light here. I see some casts that I don't want to see go off. This geomancer is going to cast his chain lightning soon. We're just going to stun him. Having a kick available for the next chain lightning that comes through or tries to come through. I'm just going to kick that instead. Just to keep them moving so people can keep DPSing. Very nice. Very, very nice. Probably should have used beacon there. We're going to stun this again. I don't want the chain lightning coming through and hitting us. We have to kite a bit because of the spiteful shades. Give the tank movement speed with the blessing of freedom. Not much else to use the blessing of freedom on. There is a disease that these guys put on you that I could use blessing of freedom on, but I do have cleanse as well for that disease. Oh, that was a really nice knockoff, actually. Thanks. Moving on to the next group. We're going to focus on this one. Target this one. Okay. Target the other one so we can stun it if necessary. I can't stun it. Whew. Okay. We have another set of cooldowns available. Hard to blip. Dropping absolutely everything on this group. I don't have stuns available, but there's AOE CC. I like this group so far. They're taking care of all the casts and stuff that they're going through. I have a kick available. I'll kick this one that has more health. The other one might go down before it casts anything. I think it did. I have a stun available. I don't have a stun available. I think I stunned the wrong thing. That chain lightning went through and hurt like a mother fucker. Giving movement speed to the tank to remove the disease. Also to just... No, I'm trying to stand in the spirit link totem. Okay, okay. I think we stabilized. Good, 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 good. Finishing off the basilisks. Use bloodlust on trash, so we, should, we can just move to the first boss. We don't have to do second boss first. We can go. There's no bloodlust, my guy. I guess he might be doing it for cooldowns so people can recover cooldowns. So we're going to do a pull here, then go over to, pull to the first boss, I would assume. We're going to kick, drop all of my cooldowns because my cooldowns are very short, so I don't mind. I'm going to drop a stun on this thing. I would really like it if the tank moved on from spiteful shades. There's no reason to fight those if you're moving on to a different area because they are slow and they die on their own. Targeting Eric. Okay. Not ideal positioning for the tank. I'm having a hard time cleaving everything and staying safe from Balog from his wild cleave that the warrior just got hit by because his warrior's health is really really low. Kick that. No reason to let that stand there. Yeah definitely not a fan of this tank's positioning. He could he would be doing better. He could be making this much more cleavable especially for the warrior. The warrior's gonna have a hard time cleaving that in my opinion. Standing over here to bait these zones to come over here. Once they're all back down on the ground I'll drop my cooldowns on them. Actually I can drop them right now because this is when they're gonna be stacked up. Eric's gonna fuck off and do random shit. Things should move a bit further. Keep Eric moving. There we go. Okay using all my cooldowns. Shield on me. I'm gonna try and move away from people. I might I dropped it on top of other people while trying to move away from people. Heavy arrow coming through, moving to the side. Tank can line of sight that. I'm not sure why he's choosing not to. That's okay. We're back on that. Leave is not up anytime soon, so we're good. We're gonna drop a beacon on this. I don't think I used beacon so far, which is a mistake. Okay. It's just Eric the Swift left. Now we just beat the shit out of him. If they were stacked better for most of the fight, I think we would have killed this a bit faster, but it's no big deal. It's fortified. You should really be focusing on trash anyway. Not that it's bad to do the thing. I'm just hoping we don't use a battle res here because the boss is almost dead. There we go. Perfect. And I'm right over here, which is also perfect, so I can grab this. There we go. The reason I grab that, by the way, is because you get a stacking buff that increases your movement speed by 10% per stack out of combat. It's useful, especially if you are worried about wiping on something. That's a very nice nice capacitor totem. Holy shit. Are we grabbing more trash? We seem to be grabbing more trash. That's good. I'm going to go over here and kick this thing. There we go. Chain lightning has been kicked. We're going to lay on hands the warrior. I don't want him dying. Seems to have a thing of uh, just being low all the time. And I see a bunch of cast bars. We're going to use blinding light. Like now, there was chomps going through and throw rocks and whatnot. Warrior's definitely constantly low. I think he just stands in shit and doesn't care. See, like I did. <laughs> I did care. I tried to move out of it. I just failed miserably. Kick that chain lightning. I will straight up wipe groups if they're not topped off and in higher keys it will wipe groups. But then again in higher keys you'll get wiped by pretty much any cast. So you gotta look out for all of them. Standing over here just to kite the spiteful away. I have 20 to 30 yard ranges on my abilities so I'm fine moving away from the boss. I can't auto attack but not a big deal. Waiting on healer mana I would assume. Probably should have killed the spiteful shade so that the healer can actually sit down and drink. He's drinking. I wasn't thinking so I didn't kill the shade. That's my bad. Okay starting. Gonna hold my cooldowns until the first ads are grouped up. There's a geomancer over here. We're going to immediately kick it so that it starts moving over to the boss. Okay we're dropping all our cooldowns here. Maybe should have waited for the totem but that'll do pig that'll do i do have beacon for the totem switching over to the totem dropping beacon while i still have wings there we go and kick this just so it moves over to the boss i think the tank tried to do the same thing but he was a little bit late happens to me all the time i have a kick available we're gonna kick this make it move over to the tank beautiful beautiful capacitor totem coming in strong shield of vengeance in case i don't make it out i'm gonna stun this chain lightning and we're gonna switch over to the totem gotta kill the totem before that bloodlust goes off 
Never mind, it's gonna go off. It's no biggie. I'm gonna drop all our cooldowns here. Maybe should have used it for the totem, but I don't think I had it. Yeah, I heard the blip after the totem basically died, so this was ideal. Get the chain lightning. Don't want any of that going through. I had a tab target there. I just had a gut feeling that it was gonna target it because there was nothing else in front of me other than it. Boss is gonna go down here. I'm gonna ignore the totem. I'm just gonna tunnel the boss because he's almost dead. Yeah, he's not even gonna finish that cast. There you go. I'm just gonna quickly grab this. I do have two charges of the vine steed so I can quickly join my group. There we go. Beautiful. Tank seems to be tanking the jagged bites. Never mind, he's not. I lied. We have knockbacks for these guys. I'm hoping that they get hamstringed and slowed. Okay, capacitor totem. Reset the stacks and all those. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Okay, we have a third one coming in. Good, 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 good. Oh, there's the third one. Never mind. There we go, there we go, there we go. I'm gonna stun that guy. For some reason, warrior stuns don't seem to work on these guys. Like, you can stun them, yes, but it won't reset their stacks. Like, the buff thing that they have. Tank is walking backwards and backpedaling out of the jagged bites. That's perfect. I gave him blessing of sacrifice just for the auto attacks that they do. Because they will hurt a lot with all those stacks. Okay, I have a stun available. We're gonna stun this one. That's the only one left alive. So the tank can also DPS it for a while. There we go. That's perfect. And with my double stun cooldown talent, I should be able to... Regain my stun pretty quickly in case I need it for the boss. The only time you should ever stun the boss instead of using an orb is when there's no orbs left because someone stepped in one. Use Blessing of Sacrifice on this guy. I need, to, I need to heal him. I'm worried that the healer won't be able to keep him up. There we go. There's no orbs, so we're going to use a stun of our own. Not ideal. Probably should have waited. We have a Stormbolt coming through as well. That's also not ideal. There's no reason to stun her if she's not going to cast her thing. Did one Shaman just ask the other Shaman to use Bloodlust? I am giving people some healing. I'll use my... My battle res here, I think it's worth it. I'm looking for who gets the shard next. Whoever gets the shard next. This warrior keeps spamming stuns. That's not good. Whoever gets the bleed next, unless it's me, is going to get my blessing of protection. Because it's a physical damage thing. I'm going to keep stepping into the orbs. Never mind, the orbs are over there. Blessing of protection on that guy. I don't want him to die again. Okay, perfect. We have this available. Please, warrior, don't fucking stun her again. Please stop stunning her. Yeah, I've seen this before on Tyrannical. That would be an issue. We're staying here. Okay, we're going to line of sight pull. Tank's gonna do his thing. He stealthed past them. He's gonna grab everything and come over to us. I like this tank. That's really good. He handled the custodians really well. He is 3k rated, it looks like, as a DPS. And now he's working on his tank. I like that. That's cool. Blessing of Sacrifice to tank. Use a Shield of Vengeance. Watch out for that cleave. We're line of sighting those hails of stone, so there's no reasons to go no reason to go there. I don't know how the shaman's dead again. He used his reincarnation. Should have just released because he can teleport nearby. Okay, we're gonna Okay, they got AoE. Now we drop our cooldowns. Now we definitely drop our cooldowns. I'm saving my blinding light for the Hails of Stone. There's a lot of other interrupts people have, so I'm not going to use anything just yet. Kick that, may as well. Two Hails of Stone, blinding light for sure. Where's my blinding light? There it is. Looking for the next Hail of Stone. I'm going to stun that one. There's a Hail of Stone on a very healthy target. We're going to use our stun on that. Kick that curse. Looking for if anyone has the curse debuff on them so that I can remove it. Another Hail of Stone here. Somebody took care of it. Wooly took care of it with his Tauren charge. Ooh, I think I got cleaved because Wooly was positioning weird. Uh, do I got a battle res here or do I... Yes, Wooly is battle resing me. Just need to move away. I'm gonna drop my beacon here. Trying not to get killed. I don't know if should I pop more cooldowns here. I think they're just about dead. Yeah. Yeah, they're just about dead. I don't have blinding light available, but I think everything's dead. Good, 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 good. It worked out. Thunderstorm coming in, clearing these guys out. Just trying to kill them all so we can res. Shaman stopping people off and drinking. I'm going to quickly res the other shaman. And off heal while the healer drinks. Keep us moving. We can give the warrior movement speed. Okay, we have a Windrush totem as well. Tanks waiting for us in front of the next pull. This pull's a bit rough. There's a good spot to use defensives here. It's during the earthquake. The earthquake is a basically unavoidable damage, so we'll put a focus target on the warder. Okay, using all our cooldowns. Obviously, stunning hail of stone, kicking the curse, earthquake coming through. We're going to use our shield of vengeance here. <laughs> okay, the tank is calling our DPS shaman an idiot. A bit much, but I'm going to divine protection here. Okay, we have the heals coming through from that. Measuring strike coming up. This basically means move. Okay, shaman beat me to that kick. Measuring strike coming through again. We're going to stun that. There's nothing much else to stun here. This thing's almost dead. There we go. That's a really rough pull, and we did quite well, other than the shaman kicking the bucket. I'm not sure what killed the shaman, but I feel like he made some sort of mistake putting a focus target on one of the seekers targeting the other sickle focus kicking the one that was focused and we're gonna on this one when he starts casting no i'm not never mind other people took care of it i'm gonna drop our cooldowns now that i'm done contemplating every single possible cc that i can do there i probably could have just kicked one of them and called it a day to be honest but we're gonna drop mm, no i'm not gonna drop beacon we're gonna 
use our beacon on the boss because these are almost dead. There's no reason to do that. Lots of spiteful coming through. Getting knocked up by volcanic. That's fine. Just moving away from the spiteful so I don't get my ass kicked. I'm not being focused anymore. There we go. Do some off healing. Clean the poisons off of the tank. I didn't do that earlier. Could have done that earlier. Should have done that earlier. Okay, going over to the tank. We almost have all our cooldowns available. Once we do, in five seconds, I'm going to use everything I have. Spell reflects from the warriors. It's very good. I'm going to use my shield of vengeance here. It's going to mitigate some of this fix damage, like damage over time, and it's going to mitigate some of this damage. Trying to get away from these now. And now we drop all our cooldowns. Going to weave a beacon in between globals. Using a divine protection here. Looking at health bars to make sure that I give people a lay on hands if necessary. Boss is at half health without bloodlust. So I feel very positive. Staying on the side that the tank's on. Just auto attacking this. That shaman's dead again. Uh, I don't have a battle rest for you buddy. I'm sorry. But you need to focus up. Trying to finish that off potentially. There we go. We finished it off. So I think the rest of them are on this side. The Shaman does great DPS. Don't get me wrong, but he's like just not surviving. Like you can't do much damage if you're dead. There's one more over there. I'll let the group handle that. I'm going to bubble walk through here and just beat the shit out of this one. That'll speed up the boss fight significantly because we don't have to wait until we come back to this side all over again. There we go. I think that was worth my bubble. Just hoping that the group can finish that off. Apparently not. I'll do it myself then. Fuck it. There we go. That's the transition over. I have a shield of vengeance available for the clap. I'm just going to use it right now. Mitigate some of that damage over time. Use divine protection here for this big blow up thing. Hopefully the boss dies before I have to do anything else. Looking how far is with lay on hands. I guess I didn't catch the guy with lay on hands. I could have done that to maybe save him, but that's I feel like that's not on me to be honest with you. Moving away because don't want to hit hit the warrior with my thing. There we go. This shaman just uh, yeah trying to get out of combat. Rezzing. Okay, tanks doing another wacky pull with line of sight. So we're gonna stay over here. Hopefully he puts the golems over here so that we can line of sight over here. That would be ideal. That's the easiest way to do it if we do it in this room. A lot of crazy pulls here. 15 minutes on the timer. That feels plenty to get to the last boss and clear it. So I'm, I'm feeling positive. The shaman just really needs to stop dying. It could be like a shaman squishiness problem because from my understanding. Okay, they say they say come. Okay, just waiting for the hail of stone. There we go. Drop all our cooldowns. Gonna use Shield of Vengeance so that I can stand in some shit here. Gonna tunnel this one golem. Divine Protection coming through here. Gonna Blinding Light. We're gonna stun this Hail of Stone. There's another Hail of Stone in the back that I can't do much about. Come on, healing cooldowns coming through. Another Hail of Stone. Can't do anything about that. Okay, gonna start Line of Sighting now. Here's a Line of Sight. And the Line of Sight again. The Shaman and the Warrior really need to start Line of Sighting. Unless they have defensives to use, which I don't think they do. But yeah, I think Shamans have an issue of not having enough defensives as well. Just trying to line of sight that, make it a little bit easier for my healer, one less target to heal. I'm gonna stand in this one just because I really need to do some DPS to finish that one off. There we go. Now when it's just one, we can kind of stand in it. The healer should be able to keep us up, but yeah, people need to just avoid the damage, make it a little bit easier for the healer. Oh, I was getting tunneled by that thing and I didn't even re realize. That's my bad. Sorry, healer. I have another set of cooldowns available. So this can be another juicy pull. I hope it is. Oh, this is a very fucking juicy pull. We're gonna target the warder, put a focus on him, move up over there. Looking for curses to interrupt. Here's a curse we're gonna use. Oh, I fucking could have interrupted it and I didn't. Who has the curse? The I can't do shit about it. Oh, that's oof. gonna lay on hands the warrior. I didn't have fucking blessing of freedom to clear the curse because I gave blessing of freedom just to move around a little bit quicker earlier. That was a mistake. I'm gonna shield the vengeance here. Looking at these guys, they're gonna cast their curses soon. I'm just gonna stun one of the custodians just to put my stun on cooldown. There's not much to interrupt with the stun anymore. Divine protection here to reduce the damage I'm taking. We need to move a bit forward because of this big zone. Getting blessing of sacrifice to the tank. Gonna on that tank to the healer shaman. The shaman's down from the claps. I had bubble up so it didn't kill me. Bit of a mess. Bit of a mess. Oh no. I'm standing and shit aren't I? No, I got hit by spiteful. I'm just I'm so stupid. I need to focus up. Gonna beacon. Actually, no, I have another set of cooldowns that I'm gonna beacon. There we go. Trying to line of sight that. I failed. Trying my best here. I'm just gonna eat that one. I don't care. Once we clear this, people will be able to teleport over to right here. I can't reach that without walking through this. I don't want to walk through that. That really fucking hurts, especially on fortified. Hank decided to come over here. That's good. Okay. That was a bit that was a bit much, honestly. That was a bit of a overpull. Release and port here. Okay, well, when you clear the this group, the next mole machine comes out over here, so you can actually use the mole machine to get here quickly. Especially if we wipe on any of this trash, what we should do is just use the mole machine to come back very quickly, not use any battle reses. The warrior is just not accepting the res. Gonna be a lot of warders here, quadruple warder pull, so we need to look out for those curses. There's three of these casts, okay. 
We're going to start casting Cursed at about the same time. I got two Curse Interrupts with that. We'll have one that's Focus Targeted that I can interrupt. We're going to Focus Target Interrupt that. Shaman also stunned it. That's good. And I have a stun available for if any one of them starts casting again. Use Shield of Vengeance here for this clap. We got nuked by something. I'm not sure what killed him. Okay, I need to watch out for the Spiteful because I've been very negligent of that so far in the run. I've been standing there and getting my shit messed up by these guys. Managed to line of sight that again. It's very important to line of sight the Ebon Stone Golems and Fortified, especially if it's a double pull. I, I failed miserably on that in the last pull and you saw how quickly that could have gone wrong. Luckily, the tank and the healer are absolute fucking beasts. That was some amazing healing. They were out of mana and they still managed to keep us up through that fight, so. And the tank also is just amazing. He, I don't think he needs a single heal. He's just doing great. There we go. Okay, that worked out. I'm gonna focus target one, target the other. Actually, just focus target. I'm just gonna kick the one that's focus targeted. Here you can again use a line of sight technique to avoid some of the damage by just stepping out of line of sight near the two second mark, like right about now. Never mind, I failed miserably. I think he could still see me. I'll try to line of sight this one. Never mind, I failed again. Very good technique, as you can see. Okay, stepping over here, letting a timeout at about two seconds left or one second left the time reaver reapplies the dot so if you step out of line of sight then you can just ignore the damage from that or reset the damage from that because it doesn't hurt until it gets to a few stacks you can just move away from these shades the healer has mana and everything so we should be fine just gonna give the tank movement speed so we can position for that i'm gonna put focus target on this targeting the time reaver waiting for the tank to position them all he wants them to be in the hallway that makes sense to me I'm gonna drop my blade of justice there so the consecration is there they're a bit out of the consecration but it doesn't matter what matters is that we have an easy way to line of sight the time reaver which i'm going to go ahead and do right about now wait for that to go to zero once you see zero seconds you know that you're safe like you know that you've successfully line of sighted it you can move back in you don't have to wait for it to completely expire okay so far so good doing some off heals here how the fuck did the shaman get killed now was it the spiteful plus a dot i feel like it was the spiteful plus a dot the shaman really he can't catch a break poor guy did a little skippy skip very nice thanks should position him closer to the edge of the room i tried to put my zone down there I'm gonna give blessing of freedom to the warrior so he can go and stand back in the fucking time twister thing whatever man i don't know this guy these guys are not exactly amazing but it's okay we put them in a little backpack and we carried them through the dungeon what the fuck is going on time sink on me I'm gonna shield of vengeance here because it does a big dot lay on hands never mind i don't have lay on hands trying to divine protection here it was a bit of a mess. Not a huge fan of where, the, where we're positioning right now, but fuck it, whatever. We find time coming through so we can get some extra haste. I don't have any defensives for this, but it's it's fortified, so it doesn't hurt as bad. Time sink on whatever the fuck. We're going to give freedom to that person. That took way too long to do, so I don't even know if it was worth it. Eternity orb. Trying to position in such a way that any orbs that drop, drop in such a way that they don't take up too much room. I can't do that anymore. I get knocked back here. Time sink on me again. Don't have blessing of freedom to do anything about that. Can I try and drop it here in the corner so nobody else has to worry about it. I'm going to shield the vengeance because I got low because the warrior dropped his on me as well. Rewind time coming through. We're going to DPS now. My cooldowns are desynced because I just haven't been doing a good job on this boss fight, but we have plenty of time to kill him. It's a fortified boss on, what is it, 20? Yeah, 20. This should be easy mode. Okay, a good run if a lot of deaths by the shaman. Time sync again. We're going to give the warrior the thing. Get out of that. Try not to stand in front of this guy. Time sync swirly over there. Sand breath coming through. Make sure I don't get hit by that. Warrior spin. Close to in front of the boss. Wing Buffet coming through. Don't have a defensive. Tried to use one, but I just didn't have one. Time sync again. Need to get away from people so I can drop it over here. Sorry, Shaman. I couldn't stand in that spirit link. It was just not, not a good time for me to be in it. Rewind time coming through. Lay on hands on the Shaman. You don't get to die again. You need to chill with the dying. Shield the Vengeance so I don't have to get healed. And there's the boss dead. Okay, cool. 20. Hold them on. Unfortified. Pretty rough run on Fortified. I mean, a pretty rough key to do on Fortified. But the run itself was good. The Shaman just died a bunch, but that's okay. I guess Shamans have an issue similar to Hunters where they don't really have any good defensives. You're going to reroll our Vortex Pinnacle key. Hopefully we get something we need. We get a free... Oh, God damn it. So we're going to have to join somebody else's dungeon. Thank you for the run. 150k DPS overall. I feel like I could have done more if I just focused on my DPS. I lost a bunch of DPS too. I'm just trying to make sure I interrupt everything, but I'd, I'll take a safer group with lower DPS than a more risky group with higher DPS if the risk is not necessary to time the key.
which here it wasn't. We had like, what, four minutes left? How much time did we have left? Three minutes, 41 seconds left. That's, I mean, that's easy. Anyway, let's upgrade our rating. 2717, there we go. And 61 runs, not 60 runs. Very good. We unfortunately got another fortified, or sorry, not another fortified, obviously another fortified key, but we only got a uh, free hold. We've already done a 21 free hold, so we don't need a 20 free hold. I would love to get a Halls of Infusion or a Neltharis run. I'm not sure how much more rating I can get out of putting those up to 20, because they're at a 15 and a 14 which is, you know, significantly lower than a 20. I do also have the untimed 20 Neltharian's Lair from last week, so I think I'm going to need quite a few 21s or 22s and 21s, depends on how I combine the things and what I get into. Ideally, I would get my own key up to a 21 or a 22, and then I would do that because it's a lot easier to get into a hosted 22 than it is to get into a... <laughs> get into a hosted 22? What the fuck am I saying? It's a lot easier to host a 22 than it is to get into a 22 that somebody else is hosting, but yeah. I I think that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. It's going to be a shorter one. In the next episode, I'm going to try and do this Halls of Infusion and Neltharis, get them to 20 and see if I can do that. It's going to be, it's been rough getting into them because people just don't want to invite a red paladin for 20s. I don't know. It's just, I mean, any DPS that isn't one of the meta DPS has a rough time. Recently, somebody pointed out that they heard that red paladin is like a meta DPS class. Ah, pfft maybe is that the case can somebody confirm i feel like they're not i feel like the meta is currently the same it's been since 10.1.5 which is you want to go guardian druid holy paladin augmentation of ochre shadow priest fire mage because everything overlaps as far as the cooldowns are concerned and you just get a shit ton of dps you have pi on the two highest de damage dealers you have a augmentation of ochre buffing and making sure that everything's cc'd interrupted and some off healing and all that good stuff and you have the guardian druid who's just straight up the best tank right now and Holy Paladin also seems to be the best performing healer. But yeah, I'm going to try and get into Halls of Infusion and Neltharis run in the next episode. I do need to start making some gold. I think I'm just not going to record myself making gold. It's kind of boring. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do to make gold because I've done all the world quests. Hopefully they reset soon and I get to actually do some more dragon riding world quests. That would be really nice. I don't know when they reset. I know that it's like every two, three days, something like that. I don't think it's the reset that they reset. But yeah, the reason I want gold, I just need it for crafting myself a chest and crafting myself some more some more boots i mean i guess some more boots but <laughs> you get what i mean because this is a 441 and this is a 441 and i would like to keep climbing an item level i'd also like to get a mark of dark roll maybe i do some farming for that because it's i think it outperforms the sand glass even with the haste that it gives it definitely outperforms it in raw damage because if you look at the damage done by the accelerating sand glass there's never much it's almost always less than a percent it's obviously not meant to be like a raw damage source it's meant to be the buff for haste with a nice little bit of damage added in. The haste is nice, I think, but I think Mark of Dargle would outperform it overall, especially on a versatility building class like uh, Red Paladin. So yeah, maybe I can maybe I can get my hands on that. Might try and do some 17 runs to get a hero tier one and uh, see where that goes. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Let me know what you liked about it in a comment. I love reading those. I also read and respond to every comment. So if there's a suggestion you have, if there's a request you have, or just a random question you have, feel free to drop a comment and I will get back to you. Also a reminder, go vote for what class you want me to play in the next series that is a link to a community poll in the top of the description so if you see something you'd like to see me play you can just vote for that i'm pretty excited to see the results as you guys start picking and choosing which uh, class i get to play but as always thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next episode i love the fact that i have an eye color that matches my weapon that's amazing